If someone were to ask me what it was about the horror genre that appealed to me so greatly, my answer would always be the simple thrill of being afraid. To be able to experience such a powerful emotion within a safe, contained environment brings a certain rush that no other media can accomplish. The issue with this, however, is that in seeking this rush time and time again, no matter how easily scared you are, eventually you grow numb to it. Tropes and cliches which you may have found horrifying become dull with how repetitive they become. As you gain a greater understanding and appreciation for the genre, the very reason it's appealing in the first place slowly loses its luster. Every now and then though, a piece of media is discovered which manages to bring back that old thrill. You're reminded of what it means to be afraid, how exciting it is to be at the edge of your seat, horrified of whatever comes next. I had this experience recently when watching the 1998 Japanese horror film Ring. Upon my initial watching of the film, I found myself not being affected too greatly by many of the tactics the film employs to disturb the viewer. I had seen the western remake prior to this watching, and due to the two films very similar structures it was hard for anything to really get under my skin. Or so I thought. Because you see, hours after completing the film, as night slowly arrived and I was left alone in the darkness of my home, I'd catch myself looking over my shoulder, scared to see a ghastly figure hiding in the dark crevices of my room. As I went to sleep that night, I could barely even close my eyes, as I feared that when I next opened them, someone or something would be looming over my bed. I was terrified. Despite my initial tame reaction to the film, it brought about a horror in me that I had not felt since I was a child, an intense fear which lingered with me long after its runtime. This led to me obsessing over Ring. I needed to know what this film did to make me feel this way. I studied it, frame by frame, picking apart every little sound cue, every shot, every story beat, only to come to one conclusion. It was all because of one scene. Ring has what I consider to be the scariest scene of all time, a singular moment which is able to spike my paranoia just from thinking about it. And today, we're going to take a look at it. In this video, we're going to go in depth on the experience that is Ring, analyzing the most important moments of the film and discussing how they all build towards the scariest scene from any movie I've ever watched. So without further ado, Let's delve into it. In order for us to understand the effectiveness of the scene in question, we first need to establish some context for what Ring is about and what moments in the film lead to it. Ring is centered around a very simple concept, the urban legend of a video that kills anyone who watches it within seven days of seeing it. This is immediately established to the viewer as the film opens, showing us two teenage girls who talk about that very video after one of them had already watched it. And what's important about this opening scene other than setting a foundation for the film is the way it initially explains the curse to us. The rules of the video are provided to us, but there is a certain ambiguity to them. There are inconsistencies between the two girls' accounts of it, one explaining the things she's heard about the tape, while the other gives her account of what she saw. This plays into the idea of it being an urban legend that nobody fully understands, and it's further reinforced later with multiple students giving wildly different accounts of what it is and how it works when interviewed for a news broadcast. All of this is meant to spike the viewer's curiosity, and as the film continues, that very curiosity is what pulls you into the mystery as more details are uncovered. 
You're given the very basics from what few details are consistent between accounts, a haunted video that when watched leaves you with seven days to live. But there are so many questions that are left completely unanswered. Who made it? Is it a TV broadcast or a tape? What is the video about? These questions are slowly but surely answered for us as the film progresses. After the cold open in which one of the two teenagers is killed by the video, we're met with our protagonist, Riko Asakawa, the aunt of the film's first victim and a journalist who begins an investigation to uncover the truth behind the video. Through her investigation, we get more concrete details about the video and its origin. We learn that it is a tape, a tape that contains disturbing imagery that when watched in its entirety causes your phone to ring. A voice on the other end then tells you that you have seven days to live, and from there, you are cursed. But it isn't just the rules of this tape which are slowly revealed to us over the film's runtime. As the stakes of the film rise with Riko showing it to her ex-husband Ryuji and her son Yoichi by mistake, and Riko inching closer and closer to death with each passing day, we learn the story behind the tape itself and how it was made. Each little piece of imagery depicted in it is meant to be a clue which we learn tells the story of a young woman named Sadako. Sadako was the daughter of a psychic who had inherited her mother's powers. After she was accused of being a fraud by a journalist during a live demonstration of her abilities, Sadako used her powers to kill him, thinking she was defending her mother. Her mother would end up taking blame for this incident, leading to her eventual suicide which left Sadako in the hands of her father, a man by the name of Dr. Ikuma who wished to study Sadako and her unique powers. Over time, however, the doctor grew to fear her, and in an act of pure evil battered her in the skull and threw her down a well so she would never be found again. The tape was created while Sadako was trapped down there, her last thoughts and very spirit imprinted onto the tape as she slowly died, alone and scared. Sadako's entire life was marked by tragedy, a tragedy that has caused her to become a wrathful, restless spirit. And upon discovering this, Riko and Ryuji bring it upon themselves to set her free and bring an end to the waking nightmare that Sadako now finds herself trapped in. They manage to find the well on the final day before the curse comes to take them, climbing down into its murky abyss and pulling her body from the water. There is a tender moment between Riko and Sadako, where a mother comforts the body of a scared, angry child who only wanted to be heard after being trapped in the dark for 40 years. And in this moment where Riko shows Sadako that she isn't alone anymore, the curse is lifted. The final hour before Riko's death passes and she and Ryuji are safe. The film ends with the two of them sat together, pondering how a parent could be so evil as to murder their own child. And as Sadako's body is taken from the well to be given a proper burial, Ring ends as the two of them continue their lives with a newfound appreciation for what they had together, giving Yoichi the childhood that he deserves. Or at least that's what the film wanted you to think. Because it's at this very point in the video that I must tell you, I haven't revealed the full truth. Everything I've described up to this point has been how the movie presents itself, however, it doesn't have the happy storybook ending that I led you to believe. Because shortly after the point in which you would expect the film to end, suddenly... Instead of our happy ending that puts a bow on the entire film, we are greeted to the scene in question. The scene where we must watch in confused horror as the ghost of Sadako reveals her true intentions. This is the scariest scene from any film I've watched, and the reason I lied about the film's ending up to this point was to establish the context for it in the same way the film does. 
See, Ring is a film that I would describe as being structured like a very well thought out joke. The entire runtime is the setup, giving us the little hints and details we need to understand what's going on, and this single moment at the end where everything we think we know is put into question is the extremely hard hitting punchline. Ring is expertly crafted to make the viewer subconsciously sympathize with Sadako by leaving the specific details of her death a complete mystery. Everything we're told is from the perspective of the characters who know very little about her true nature but choose to see the best in her. The red flags that allude to her true nature are there throughout the entire movie, but we as the viewer ignore them because our cast of characters really, truly believe in Sadako's innocence. Even minor details like the film's score work with the way it's written to evoke these feelings in the viewer, with moments like Rico and Sadako's meeting in the well being scored with a bittersweet melody that is meant to make the viewer feel bad for her. All of this setup exists in this film purely to get the viewer to let their guard down. It lulls you into a false sense of security so strong that by the time the final scene happens, it leaves you stunned in terror, just like Ryuji as he hopelessly watches the wrathful ghost of Sadako emerge from his television. And it isn't just the setup that makes this scene so horrifying. Everything about the way it's shot and scored works to make the viewer feel as trapped in the moment as humanly possible. Actually getting into the scene itself, one thing that I noticed watching it over multiple times is how slowly it goes about revealing Sadako. At first, it's merely the sound of the tape playing in the back of the room, catching both the viewer and Ryuji off guard at a point in time where you expect the film to end. As he goes to investigate, we are brought with him, seeing that the tape has once again begun playing on his television. But now, something is very wrong. It begins where it left off, with the lingering visual of the well never cutting to static as it did before. And as we watch in tense silence, we see that the video now continues with Sadako emerging from the well and lumbering towards the camera. Everything about the way Sadako moves looks wrong. She's slow and methodical in her movements, with it appearing as though every step she takes is a struggle, an effect which was accomplished by filming her actress walking backwards into the well and reversing it in the final product, making her movement appear unnatural. These moments before the climax provide this scene with a kind of tension that I rarely see from any other horror movie. It doesn't rely on anything like jump scares that would provide a brief, fleeting feeling of surprise or even showing something overtly threatening to the viewer. Instead, it lingers on something mundane that shouldn't be here. It shows us a being that we once thought we understood the intentions of, but through the context of the scene we now realize we know nothing about. And that lack of understanding is where the tension comes from, because now she walks towards us, with no backing score to indicate the tone and no visible expression on her face to tell us her intent. We are completely in the dark and are forced to wait with bated breath for any release to the tension. And for a moment, that is what we're given. A short distraction in the form of the phone ringing. This brings the audience's attention away from the screen alongside Ryuji, who tries to tell Riko on the other end what's happening. But this distraction does little to relieve us of the scene's tension, as when we finally look back, this happens. The presence which was once separated from us by the TV screen now becomes a real, tangible threat, trapped in the cramped space of Ryuji's apartment alongside him. It's here where the scene truly picks up, with Ryuji so shocked by what he sees in front of him that his legs turn to jelly and he desperately crawls away. But there's no escape. 
Sadako slowly looms over him as if to toy with his fear, and as he finally gives up and stares at his tormentor in defeat, we're given a glimpse of Sadako's face, which finally reveals her true intentions. A look of raw, visceral hatred and spite. This entire movie does everything in its power to make you believe, even for a moment, that Sadako was a redeemable character who could be set free. But with this one shot, we realize that the force we were meddling with since the beginning of the film was that of pure malevolence. As this reveal happens, we see the final look of horror on Ryuji's face as the life leaves his eyes, bringing a close to the scariest scene ever made. 